believe we are live now, and this is the Fellowship of Joy on Sunday, August 13th, 8 a.m., maybe closer to 8.01 a.m., but uh, still registering at 8 a.m. for me. Join me in praying for all humanity, uh, for ourselves, and for anyone we know as we pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. With pauses for you to pray in your heart uh, for the extensions of those words and the implications in your own life, the lives of people that you know. For instance, when we say, uh, give us today our daily bread, think of people who have special needs that you uh, want to mentioned before God, whether those are healing needs or food needs or material needs or guidance needs, whatever kinds of needs. That's that's the reason for the pauses. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Us today. This is indeed the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Maybe you can find a way to sing the doxology with me. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him all above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. And then maybe the Gloria Patri. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. What sorts of fears freeze you, torment you, capture you, control your decisions, influence your thinking, wreak havoc in your life, cause you all manner of distress. When we come to the 14th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, several things have happened that have both been disturbing and awe-inspiring. For one, John the Baptist has been arrested and beheaded through an act of utter treachery and deceit. And yet at the same time frame, Jesus has again fed the multitudes miraculously and wondrously and people have been healed and delivered and mighty things have happened. And at this point, Jesus senses the need 
to get away from the crowds and pray. He is on one side of the Galilee near the mountainous range that separates the land of Israel from Lebanon and Syria. And he tells the disciples to get in the boat and start toward the other side of the, of the Sea of Galilee, the big lake there, that gorgeous lake. And he climbs the hill. They see him walking up the hill, no doubt, uh, up the mountain to find a quiet place to spend with his father. And they're out at sea. And early in the morning, the fourth watch of the night, really, the winds came and the waves came and the boat was battered by the waves. And it was one of those storms at sea that seafarers talk about when they are back in the public houses and bragging about what they've survived. When the disciples were in the boat, I don't know, it's not reported what they're feeling, but we can only imagine. But verse 25 says, early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. And when they saw him, they were terrified, saying, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. They'd been in storms. You know, you have something in this world called systematic desensitization. And that is you, you take your worst fear and you face it, you, you deal with it, you live through it. You live through enough of these tragedies and travesties and trajectories of life that threaten you and it's another day and another dollar. You've been through one storm, you probably get through this one. Yeah, there's still a, a tingle of fear, but it's familiar fear. But now they see something, looks like a ghost coming toward them. And you can only imagine what they're thinking because this is not in their frame of reference. This is not, this is something they've heard about. This is something they've uh, heard stories about. Maybe they've sung, sung shanty songs about it. And yet now they're seeing something and they're all seeing it, see? They're all seeing this shadowy figure walking toward them on the water, not just any water, not calm water, but a stormy water. Well, but immediately verse 27 says, Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart or take courage or be of good courage. It is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started on the water and came toward Jesus. And he said, when he, no when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. He wasn't in the boat anymore. That's <laughs> something else to be, to be outside the boat in the strong wind rather than to be in the boat. And he began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand, caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got in the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat were saying, truly, you are the son of God. Peter, you have little faith. That's interesting, isn't it? Of all the people 
who get accused of having little faith. It's the guy that was willing to get out of the boat. Boy, if his faith was little, what does that say about the faith of everybody else in the boat? What does that say about my faith? What does it say about your faith? Have you gotten out of the boat? Once or twice in my life, I've gotten out of the boat. And hopefully for the big things, hopefully for the important things. If you have the key verse, you've got the outline of this. Take heart. Um, some translations say, be of courage or be of good courage or be of good cheer. Take courage. Take courage. Courage is not the absence of our, all our apprehensions. It is facing them, dealing with them. It is being willing to do what we need to do, what must be done in the face of them. It is being bold enough to venture out into the unknown, to move toward Christ, to move toward God, to move toward God's will, when there are no absolute assurances, when all we see of Jesus on the water are the shadows, it is the willingness to follow through with our commitments. It is the bravery that we muster to face another day. It is speaking out when it seems safer to keep our mouths shut. It is walking when we want to hide. It is living our lives in the face of adversity. It is staring down the threats. It is realizing that bad things can happen to good people. They have happened to good people. They might happen to good people. They will happen, but the only way we really lose ultimately is by not acting according to God's purposes and God's will and not moving toward Jesus in each adversity, in each storm, in each instance of the unknown. Take courage. When he says take heart, take courage, it indicates to us that it is something we can take. It is something that we can take initiative on. It is something we can do and we can decide to be courageous. It is within our power. He can call it from us. He can command it of us and we can command it of ourselves. We can command our courage. Our courage is available to us at the command of Christ and at our own command. Because some of the most courageous people that we've ever known were acting while they were shaking in their boots, while they were trembling within while they had no guarantees of success. Take heart. The second thing he says is, it is I. Now that's not the way our grammar works in these days, but we would say it's me. But it is I, so strong, isn't it? It is I, I, the I am. I, I am with you. I am here to the end of the age. Let that be the source of your courage and your strength and your power and your assurance, the blessed assurance that Jesus is yours. It's I. Well, what did they think? All they saw was the figure of a human. 
walking toward them. They'd never seen that before. Have you? I've never seen it before. I expect I'll live out the rest of my life and never see it. But they saw it. And what's the first thing they thought? It's a ghost. It's a ghost. Now, this is, this is an illustration of the difference between superstition and real faith. When they say it's a ghost, they're living out the stories they've heard in the pubs with the other sailors and fishermen. They are conjuring in their minds without intention those legends and mythologies of the sea that are all based on fear. They're all based on superstition. It's a ghost. It's the Grim Reaper coming to get me. We're not going to survive this storm. It's a sign that something is very, very wrong. And really, it was the exact opposite. It was a sign that everything's going to be okay. But how do we how do we interpret those visions and how do we interpret those thoughts? All the as I understand the devil, he's a trickster. <laughs> and all he can really evoke in us is terror. He's a terrorist. And all of the minions and all of the ideas associated and and the superstitions are designed to play on our superstitions and fears. Okay, so you put the broom on one side of the house last night and it ends up on the other side of the house the next morning and you assume that it's the end of the world for you. It's a ghost. Well, what if it is? Is that, is that the best that the ghost could do? Just scare you? Annoy you? Disturb you? Rent space in your brain? Jesus wants, oh, it's him. He's there. There's nothing to be afraid of. The power and the grace to recognize the presence of Jesus and the presence of the spirit, the presence of the father, the presence of God, the presence of meaning in our moments, the presence of providence, the presence of Jesus walking on the water to us, walking in the midst of our circumstances, walking with us along the Psalm 23 road through the valley of the shadow of death, walking with us, being with us, walking toward us, appearing to us in a thought, in a word, in a deed, in a circumstance. That is the source of the courage that he's telling us to take. That is the source of our sense of well-being. And we can look for it, that presence. We can look for him. We can reach out to him because though he is invisible, he is there. And that is part of the meaning of trust. Trust. Trusting as the moments fly, trusting as the days go by, trusting him, whatever befall, trusting Jesus, that is all. And it is that step of saving faith that we take when we say, Lord, I trust you. I believe you. I, I put my life in your hands. It was actually the source of what Peter prayed. If you'll bid me come, I'll come. I'll just jump right out of the boat and come to you. And some today are thinking about jumping out of the boat. And it's not so much jumping out of the boat. It's not walking on the water. It's not getting in the storm. You're in the storm. You're just in a boat. There's not much. There's just a couple of inches between you and the water. Uh, wooden inches. But it's coming to Jesus. No matter what else is going on, whatever is between you and Jesus. Your own sin, your own doubts, your own fears, but moving to Jesus at his bidding, come. And maybe he is whispering in your ear, 
today as I speak, come. And it is I. It's that discernment that enables you to recognize God is there. And God is there. And the presence of Jesus is there with you. Take heart. It's I. Don't be afraid. In the midst of a devastating world war, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, our president of this country, some of you are listening from other places, but he said, we have nothing to fear, but fear itself. Because fear is a destabilizer. And fear is an immobilizer. And fear will paralyze you and keep you from living life and keep you from embracing joy and peace and purpose. Fear will stand between you and where you need to be. It wasn't the water that was the real issue of Peter walking. It was coming to Jesus. And the moment he lost sight of Jesus, he began to sink. But immediately he cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus did. And they got back in the boat. And then, and only then, the storm subsided. And I wonder sometimes when Jesus said, oh, you have little faith, why would you doubt? You know, the gospel writers don't record the facial expressions or the chuckles in the voice. Yes, Jesus was teaching him, but Jesus was also teasing him. Of all the people in the boat, the tempestuous, impulsive Peter, Simon Peter, is the only one that's get, willing to get out and come. And still his faith was small. But what did Jesus say about little faith? He said, well, with a little faith, you can move a mountain. So don't beat yourself up when you don't have enough faith. You've got enough faith. You just have to put it in the right person. And so when Simon Peter says, save me, Jesus saves him. And he'll do the same for you. You don't have to muster great faith to cry out to God for help in the midst of your circumstances. Jesus knows that you are afraid. That's why he says, don't be afraid. And they were afraid of something they thought was a ghost. He got in the boat. The wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him. They worshipped him. And made a declaration. Truly, truly, you are, you, Jesus, our teacher, our master, you are the son of God. And then they, they landed in Gennesaret and people recognized Jesus. And the word got out and the business of spreading the good news of the kingdom went on and people brought their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of their his cloak and they were healed and life went on. Oh, he may be sending you to the other side of the lake today or the other side of the sea. There may be storms ahead of you. You may be in the storm. But he always shows up at the right moment. And he bids us come. Come to him in the midst of it all. To take heart. Don't be afraid. Because at the center of that message is the solid word. It's me. It's just me. It's I. I'd be working in my office late at night, everybody in bed. I'd come to the main part of the house, open the door, separated one side of the house 
from the others and uh, dogs start barking, barking, one or two dogs. If one starts barking, the other likes to join in and sing harmony. And as much as I don't wanna talk in the middle of the night and wake people up, I'll say, it's just, it's just grandpa. And that's all they need to hear. And that's all we need to hear in the middle of it all. It's not a ghost. It's not some sort of mythology. It's not some sort of grim reaper coming for you. It's Jesus. Come to Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And amen. And amen again. <laughs>